We are going to continue our discussions on air conditioning and refrigerant by talking quickly about refrigerant cylinders. The cylinders are usually made of steel or aluminum and have a diameter of four and a half inches or greater and a length of 12 inch or more. They must also have a pressure release de protection device. The device can be a rupture disc, also known as a burst disc, a fusible plug, or a spring operated relief valve. The spring allows the valve to close at a, a low pressure and the valve allows refrigerant to escape if the pressure gets too high. A rupture disc, the disc bursts under pressure and the refrigerant comes out the side. The fusible plug, the plug melts under high temperature and allows the refrigerant to escape. The spring is really the only one that is not a single use. It will reset itself. Once a rupture disc opens, it allows all the content of the cylinder to be released. A fusible plug is made up of metal with a low melting point, which melts and releases a cylinder's entire charge if the refrigerant begins to overheat. Refrigerant cylinders also at least have one valve at the top that provides a connection to access the refrigerant. Regulations for cylinders are prescribed by the Department of Transportation. That's a very important point. The Department of Transportation requires that cylinders contain a corrosive refrigerant must be expected and recertified every five years. Cylinders containing non-corrosive refrigerant must be inspected every 10 years. There are three main types of refrigerant cylinders that an HVAC technician uses. One is a storage cylinder, two is disposable cylinders, three are recovery cylinders. Storage cylinders, it's more effective to purchase refrigerants in 100 pounds and 150 pound cylinders than to buy smaller cylinders. These large storage cylinders are used to charge refillable service cylinders at the shop. They are usually positioned upside down with the valve at the bottom to make a filling, a, filling a cylinder easier and faster. Storage cylinders are fitted with a protective cap to protect the valve from damage and should be in place when the tank is not in use. This is an example of a storage cylinder. Use a hand truck with the cylinder secured by a chain to move any cylinders weighing over 35 pounds. You don't want to drop these things and you, they have to have a cap. Packing is installed around the valve stem to ensure the valve is leak proof where the valve stem enters the valve. The packing can be made of lead or graphite. An adjustable packing nut holds the packing in place between the valve stem and the valve body. Disposable cylinders are one of the most commonly used types of refrigerant containers. They're designed for one time use only. Many popular refrigerants are available in disposable cylinders which contains small quantities of refrigerant from a few ounces to 50 pounds. Disposable cylinders should be stored at temperatures below 125 degrees to prevent refrigerant pressure buildup. Disposable cylinders are easy to handle and eliminate the need to refill from a storage cylinder. The handle is designed to protect the valve if the cylinder is dropped. So again, we have a carrying handle, we have a refrigerant valve, and we have our labels. These are 15 and 24 pound containers, and that's basically on the weight of the contents of the refrigerant. Disposable cylinders have a rupture disc, okay? It will be a disc that blows out if the refrigerant in pressure gets too high. For cylinders with only one valve, a technician will charge the system with the vapor right side up, valve on top, or with liquid upside down, valve on the bottom. Service technicians are often required to carry refrigerant cylinders and a tool bag up onto a roof. A carrying strap is a useful tool. If you're climbing a ladder, it's a lot easier to have a carrying strap for your refrigerant than to try to do it with a hands on the ladder and on the refrigerant cylinder. It's safer as well. 
Prior to disposing of a disposal cylinder, all refrigerant must be recovered into an approved recovery cylinder, including the vapors. Then the disposal cylinder must be evacuated down to atmospheric pressure, and the cylinder may then be disposed of or recycled. Disposal cylinders are not designed for recovery use and should never be used for this purpose. Before you dispose of a disposable refrigerant cylinder, pop, you have to break the handle off in the open position and you have to pop out the rupture disc. The reason for this is you don't want kids in the neighborhood or climbing into the dumpster finding these cylinders and try to use them for other purposes. Recovery cylinders is the next thing we're going to talk about. Recovery cylinders are cylinders that are specifically designed for refrigerant recovery and nothing else. While other refrigerant cylinders usually are color-coded by their types, recovery cylinders all look the same. Each recovery cylinder is dedicated to the use of only one type of refrigerant once it's begun to be used. For example, if you're recovering R22 refrigerant from a residential air conditioning system, only R22 can be recovered in that cylinder. If another refrigerant is present at the same location, such as 404A, a different cylinder should be used. Recovery cylinders are easily recognized by their gray paint on the lower portion and yellow paint on the upper portion. Recovery cylinders should be inspected for dents and other signs of damage before use. Cylinders that are under 300 PSIG should be tested every 10 years. Cylinders that are pressurized over 300 PSIG should be tested every five years. Never fill a recovery cylinder past its recommended capacity, which is stamped on the cylinders. Recovery cylinders have two valves. There's a liquid valve and their gas or vapor valve. The gas valves are usually blue, the liquid valve is usually red. However, be careful on this because the valves do get interchanged occasionally, so always look at the stamp on the valve. The gas valve opens a passage between the gas inlet and the top of the cylinder. Okay. The liquid valve opens a passage between the liquid inlet and a tube that reaches to the bottom of the cylinder. This allows the technician to remove liquid refrigerant without having to turn the cylinder upside down. So again, always check the colors. Don't rely on them. Rely more what's stamped on it. And this is just another picture of this. If you shake a recovery cylinder and... Um, that you're not getting liquid out of the proper valve and you hear rattling around, it means the tube has come off and that's gonna to have to be repaired by the factory.